There is one weapon that's not in Halo Infinite that's been in Halo longer than it hasn't been in Halo. And that weapon is the DMR. And it's sorely missed within Halo Infinite. But is there a place for this weapon to return in the Halo Infinite sandbox? Well, we take a deep dive into that. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin Aaron. Today we're doing a discussion video about the DMR and if it does have a place within Halo Infinite. So if you like these type of discussion videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel within that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo, make sure to tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So like I said at the top of this video, the DMR has been in Halo longer than it hasn't been in Halo, which feels kind of weird, which you definitely had more games without it in the sandbox. But between Halo Reach until Halo Infinite, that time period, we had more DMR time in the franchise than without it. Now, why even talk about the DMR returning in Halo Infinite? Because right now it's not in there and I'm not really missing the DMR a whole lot in Halo Infinite. I've always felt like the weapon was a bit redundant after Reach, as it always just kind of felt like another battle rifle, but just single shot instead. Though the reason why I'm bringing it up in this video is because we've seen the DMR in multiple pieces of art, especially in the cover art of the Rubicon Protocol book that's gonna be coming out later this year. You can see a Spartan holding a DMR, so lore-wise, it would make sense for our DMR to return. Now, we've seen the DMR in multiple pieces of promotion and also toys and things like that, so, I would find it highly unlikely that we'd never see the DMR ever return in Halo Infinite. Plus with the DMR being a fan favorite weapon, a lot of callbacks to Reach as in Season 1 right here is a huge callback to Reach. Why not have the DMR return eventually in Halo Infinite? Maybe even with Season 2. Now I would love the DMR to return, but in a proper way. You can't just bring the DMR back. It would definitely require some significant changes. Now, why was the DMR brought into the game in the first place? Well, it was to kind of continue on the same formula that the Battle Rifle created for Halo 2 and Halo 3. When Bungie decided to go create Halo Reach, they kind of wanted to mix things up a bit and decided to create the DMR, which the DMR does fulfill the same kind of role that the Battle Rifle filled within Halo 2 and 3. To carry on the legacy of having precision weapons being an overall good weapon to have as people were really enjoying the gameplay of Halo 2 and 3, Bungie obviously wanted to mix things up to not have like a Halo 3 to create the DMR to kind of fulfill that role, but also have it fulfill that role of like precision weapons being the overall best choice of weapons. Maybe not in every single scenario, but for the most part, the weapon of the DMR fits pretty much most roles and does a pretty good job at everything. Much like the battle rifle did in Halo 2 and in Halo 3. And the reason why precision weapons continue to do so well within the Halo franchise as they require more pinpoint accuracy, require more effort from the player to maintain accuracy and placement of the reticle on the enemy player. Bungie even kind of stated it themselves when it came to this Vidog about when they brought in the DMR, what the purpose of it was for. We refined a lot of the weapons to push them into their particular role and that role is defined a lot by range and the range of combat that you're gonna play. For instance, the DMR, which is a sort of medium to long range Range, suppression, marksman rifle. As you can see, the DMR, as said by Bungie, does fill the same type of role that the battle rifle filled back in Halo 2 and 3. Though I would say that the DMR did fulfill its role rather well within the sandbox of doing being that mid to long range weapon, but obviously it came with its own set of issues, most obviously being Bloom, being a big part that the community did not really enjoy. Though it also created a more difficult weapon to use as accuracy needed to be more important to the player, which originally sounds good, right? We're like, okay, let's increase that skill gap. And initially that does sound like a good idea, but it could actually be more detrimental because you want weapons to be easy to pick up and use, but then also difficult to master. If you want an example of which weapon is easier to use, jump into SWAT. Is it easier to land shots with a DMR or is it easier to get kills with a battle rifle? I'd say the battle rifle is much easier to use. Though a major criticism about the Halo 3 battle rifle was that it felt very inconsistent. This could be due to the random bullet deviation spread that it had. I mean, like it didn't like bloom out or anything, but the bullet variations would change a little bit about how they would hit out of the weapon. And also you had to lead your shots, which can just lead to human error. And sometimes you feel like you landed that shot, but it might have been just human error while you missed it. So what Bungie tried to do is create a consistent weapon 
that also didn't just completely overpower everything. So what Bungie decided to do was make the DMR hit skin have that consistent accuracy feel of the weapon, but you had to kind of reel it back a little bit because then it'd be overpowered. And so they decided to bring back Bloom from Combat Evolved. This leads me into my second point, talking about the DMR in Halo Infinite, is the difference between hit scan and projectile. And then we have both within Halo Infinite. With weapons like the Sidekick, Commando, and Battle Rifle all being hit scan, where a weapon like the Stalker Rifle is projectile as along with the sniper rifles also projectile and what i mean by hit scan versus projectile as in hit scan you don't need to lead your shots you just see ahead you put your reticle on it you click it the bullets will land on that player compared to projectile like say the halo 3 battle rifle you had to lead your shots to kind of predict the where the bullets and where the person would land though going hit scan does create its own issue especially at longer ranges is where you really start seeing this issue i know a lot of people say they want to see battle rifle starts within halo infinite which again would feel great, but I don't know if the gameplay would be super well because it'd be so difficult to move around the map. If you guys remember the map Hemorrhage, which is a remake, really didn't play that well because it's so difficult to move around on that map because everyone has these pinpoint accurate DMRs that are hit scan that will fly across the map instantly and land shots. This is why Bloom was implemented to kind of reel back that hit scan accuracy because no Bloom DMRs works well in 4v4, but for big team battle and larger scale modes or just maps that have long longer lines of sight, not at all. So Bloom was implemented to the DMR to kind of nerf hit scan a little bit, discourage spam, and extend out that time to kill. So Bloom was very necessary on the DMR for it to be a rather balanced weapon within the sandbox. Now you don't agree with me? Well, remember Bloodline from Halo 2 Anniversary? We all started with hit scan battle rifles and if you guys remember how that plays out, it's pretty difficult to move around that map as well because People are just kind of sitting back on the outsides of the map, peppering each other with battle rifles at super long distances. Like, have you ever gone to the middle of the map at all, like that middle base where the shotgun spawns on Bloodline? Probably not, because you're most likely going to die before you even have a chance to get there. This is why Halo Infinite's big team battle mode has the starting weapons of the sidekick and assault rifle, because if you started with the battle rifle, people would just be kind of sitting in the back of the map, peppering each other and just kind of picking off damage kills. Not the most fun or engaging experience. Now we say these differences in hit detection type, now we have to discuss whether or not it makes sense for the DMR to return in Halo Infinite. Because if you remember, the goal for Halo Infinite's sandbox was to reduce the redundancy that was already in the Halo 4 and Halo 5 sandboxes. Though redundancy has always been there within Halo, for example, like in Halo 2, we had the Spectre vehicle compared to the Warthog, and obviously the Warthog was way more effective, but you kind of see the redundancy there of having like a Covenant version of the same vehicle. Same thing with like the Mauler and shotgun in Halo 3. Like the Mauler was just kind of like a lesser shotgun. It worked well with like a one shot melee kind of experience, but why not just have a shotgun instead if you can do that kind of same kind of feel. But Halo 4 and 5 really doubled down on the redundancy where it seemed like almost every single weapon within the sandbox had a UNSC, had a Covenant and a Forerunner version as well. I mean, for example, like we had the UNSC battle rifle, then we had the Covenant carbine, and then, then later on was added in the Forerunner light rifle, which all effectively did the same thing of being mid to long range precision weapons. And so to reduce this redundancy in it, 343 decided to kind of go through and rethink the sandbox. So now for mid to long range precision weapons that we have, we have the battle rifle, commando, and stalker rifle. Which I would argue that the stalker rifle plays more like a true DMR, a designated marksman rifle, than the DMR in Halo Reach 4 and 5 ever did. As the stalker rifle is a three shot kill, kind of like a heavy hitting, high accuracy kind of weapon, which is exactly how a DMR you would think would play out as in a first person shooter. Though I will agree that the DMR certainly had a little bit better range than a battle rifle due to the lesser recoil and being a single shot weapon though the time to kill and effective ranges were similar enough to where they didn't really play out that different between the battle rifle and dmr from previous games like halo 4 and 5. So well, how would we implement the dmr into halo infinite because i do feel like there is some room for this weapon to fit in it but you'd have to completely rethink how the dmr from halo reach to halo 5 actually worked out you can't just copy and paste the Halo 4 and Halo 5 DMR 
into Halo Infinite because it would just be completely redundant. Because as we mentioned previously, the battle rifle covers that mid to long range, the stalker rifle covers a little bit longer of a range, and the commando kind of covers a little bit shorter of this mid long range kind of engagements, but effectively these three weapons kind of balance each other out. And if you just throw in the Halo 4 or Halo 5 DMR, it would just kind of act like another battle rifle. So how do we make this weapon feel more unique, but also not be redundant within the sandbox? Well, to avoid that redundancy with the stalker rifle, well, the DMR could be a hit scan weapon to match its counterparts of the battle rifle and commando rifle. To feel like a true designated marksman rifle roll, it should be more of a high damage, low fire rate kind of weapon, probably slower than the stalker rifle because I couldn't imagine anything faster than that. Now traditionally the DMR is a five shot kill which would put it in the lower end of the time to kill situation and not really feel like a designated marksman rifle like a long range precision weapon so I would suggest to buff up the damage traditionally to a three shot kill to match with the stalker rifle but maybe be a little bit more generous to land shots with as I do find that the stalker rifle can be a little too precise at times to get those shots landed on the player. Maybe increase the reticle size of the DMR, maybe also increase the red reticle range as well so it could be more favorable to land shots. So far, our imaginary DMR is hit scan, takes the same amount of shots to kill as a stalker rifle, and so it's a basically easier to use version of it, but now the DMR would require some negatives to not have it outclass the stalker rifle in every way. The way 343 could balance out this weapon, which they are already doing in Halo Infinite, is to add a combination of high recoil, bloom, or both at the same time. Recoil and bloom are features on weapons right now in Halo Infinite, like the Psychic and especially the Commando. Now this delicate balance of how much bloom, recoil, red reticle range, and fire rate is needed for this DMR to be effective within the Halo Infinite sandbox would require plenty of play testing to get it just right. Because as we stated previously, this mid to long range engagement weapon is already rather packed and fulfilled between the commando battle rifle and stalker rifle. So effectively our imaginary DMR would be easier to use than a stalker rifle uh, but it would also require more accuracy and precision from the player themselves to be able to land their shots and have the weapon be effective within the Halo Infinite sandbox. So to answer the question should the DMR return to Halo Infinite? Short answer yes but it requires some necessary changes of how the weapon has traditionally functioned within the sandbox for it to function properly to not be either completely redundant, underpowered, or completely overpowered at the same time. As in previous Halo titles, the DMR effectively was just like another battle rifle, but single shot instead. So I feel the changes discussed in this video, the new and improved DMR would fit quite uniquely and nicely within the Halo Infinite sandbox. Let me know in the comment section down below, how would you implement the DMR into Halo Infinite? If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.